posture braces are a scam. They just like don't work at all for so many different reasons. And in this video right now, here today, I will break down all the reasons why. To begin, we need to think about what posture really is. It's where your body sits in space, your position, and how you support that position, which muscles you're using to support that position to stop you collapsing into a heap on the ground. Now let's look at the logic of posture braces. The idea is they'll improve your posture, and they'll do this by artificially moving your body into a new position. The first thing to consider is, is that even a good position? Like, is that where we want our body to actually end up? And secondly, even if it was, it isn't, does being put and held in a position by an external brace mean that you can then go and hold and support that position yourself? Positionally speaking, the majority of these shoulder braces adjust the position of the shoulder blades. And this just makes literally no sense. Shoulder blades are not the problem. They're just a symptom. You can't fix any problem by treating symptom. What do I mean by that? Shoulder blade position is largely determined by the position of the torso underneath it. If the torso is collapsed and leaned forward, then the shoulder blades will reflect that position in their shape. They will collapse and round forward. They're like a jacket or a shirt. Like if you put a jacket on, it will just take the shape of the thing underneath. They don't determine their own position meaningfully. Like, yes, you can pull them back in this position. Like if someone's really round, you could pull the shoulder blades all the way back, but gravity is just waiting to take them forward again. But if the torso is upright and round, the shoulder blades will naturally sit back on this shape. And this has nothing to do with pulling the shoulder blades back together. This is a symptom of the torso position. And right off the bat, we're already in hot water here because there isn't a posture brace that can meaningfully impact the torso position. But let's say somehow we have this. Even then, it's incredibly limited because no external brace can open the rib cage meaningfully. It's just not something that you can pull apart with an external system. But even then, that's kind of missing the point because torso position doesn't just exist on its own independently. You can't change torso position independent from the rest of the body. The hip position determines a lot of torso position. And this is so clear, like if we just tilt someone's hips forward, we can see the low back respond to that change almost immediately. And this low back change is then reflected in the upper spine. As the low back curves this way, the upper spine is going to curve back the other way. The body naturally looks for balance in these things. Like in theory, the whole thing could just be a giant arch curvy thing, but that's just not how bodies stack themselves up. You can't pick just a random bit of this chain like the shoulder blades pull them back and expect it to impact meaningfully the rest of it. It just doesn't make sense. Okay, so positionally this doesn't make sense. It's not even changing the position of the thing that needs to be changed. But then add that to the second half of this equation. That is, external bracing systems provide artificial position. They don't do anything with support. You need to learn to support any changed position yourself. You literally aren't learning that if you have a brace. A brace is doing that for you. And as soon as you remove that brace, the body is just going to go back to where it was before because you didn't teach it anything. You just put it somewhere. It's like putting a kid in a car that's being driven and then asking him why he can't drive. Like, he wasn't doing any of it. Maintaining the position of the body is about muscular support and to some extent mobility. Perhaps it might help a little with mobility, but it does absolutely nothing for the support side of this equation. Like learning to use the muscles you need to be upright is the whole thing. It's just crazy that you can imagine you could just skip that step somehow. And this shows up like almost immediately when we look at the data for other brace-like interventions. For instance, the data on insoles, you know, foot support is super underwhelming, like really, really, really underwhelming. I'm surprised the data on them isn't worse considering how flawed the concept is. Like you need to learn to use the foot to stand up on the foot yourself. Just squishing it into a new position is just squishing it, you know? And this is because fundamentally putting someone in a position solves nothing. You have to teach them how to support the position. It's about the position and the sport. They work together. And when we look at the hard data, the studies done on these postural braces themselves, thinking about what we just covered, it would be pretty surprising if there was some glowing evidence that these things are just hot shit. And surprise, surprise, th there isn't any good data on these. There are a bunch of wishy-washy, pretty biased studies saying, ah, oh, I feel a bit better, or they look slightly better, or my shoulder angle changed by five degrees. Like, there are no long-term studies, they're not really looking at pain. It's basically just studies to sell bits of plastic to people on the internet. And it's also worth mentioning, biomechanically speaking, that these braces are worse than just ineffective. They're also potentially dangerous. Let's set this up. The brace is going to pull your shoulder blades backwards, but it isn't changing the torso. So your torso is still going to be coming forwards. Now, people think of their arms and shoulder blades as the same thing, but they aren't. The arms are still going to be independently moving forward and down as the shoulder blades are moving back. And as soon as you move arm and shoulder blade apart, you're going to get into trouble with your rotator cuff. Basically, the thing that's going to get caught in the middle of these two opposing forces, and it's a very good opportunity to injure this if you're interested. I really wouldn't recommend these things to anyone. The one question that does need to be answered, though, is 
why they're so damn popular. And I think it's because people want easy fixes to what are fundamentally, ultimately hard problems. If these things work, people would be walking around with great posture everywhere. It would just be super easy, strap them up and go. Like this was basically physiotherapy in the 50s. If you read one of the old books, they're strapping people up. Like think Forrest Gump, like he had all those braces and things. You don't see them anymore because they just don't really work. Anyway, let me briefly outline some of those hard fixes now in case you are interested. One of the best places to start with thinking about changing your posture is at the hips. It's really important to get your belt line fairly flat. You can think of your hips like a big old cup of water and the thing, the water, is the torso. They hold the water of your torso. If the cup tilts forward, the torso tips forward, the water spills out, it's not going to work very well. So getting your belt line flat is a really good place to start. This involves using your abdominal muscles and your glute muscles. They're really important postural muscles and they have a big role to play for keeping your hip cup stable. Then relying on the support of these muscles, you can then extend through the upper spine and expand the rib cage, allowing it to pivot up on your spine. But all of this relies on the good foundation beneath. If you just start pivoting up and trying to move your upper spine without the good foundation underneath, it's gonna look something like this, which is just an extra bendy back, which is what people often think of when they think of good posture. But obviously visually here isn't, this is low back problem city. Then once the torso is up in a nice, correct, well-supported way, you can relax the shoulder blades on that structure and they should naturally start to fall back. If you've been in a very collapsed position for a very long time, it might take a little while for them to get used to this, but over time they will slowly move back. And don't stress if you can't get all the way upright or do this perfectly. Like changing your posture ultimately is a very slow, persistent, long process. And there are no easy fixes or shortcuts as far as I can tell. If you have any, please let me know. I would love some. <laughs> It's also worth mentioning when you are trying to mess around with these things, don't let your center of gravity, your weight, get too far back because this is going to throw away your posterior chain muscles. I won't get into it too much and I've covered a lot of these ideas in other videos, but yeah, keep your weight somewhat forward. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. I will make videos sometimes. If you like this video and want to see more, you could like, comment, subscribe, tell your uncle about me, put up flyers in your local library, pay for a billboard with my name on it in Times Square, whatever you think is best. Peace out.